Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. All right, so today I'm heading back into the Crisis Dungeons, and we are going to take on the first of the two very hard event dungeons. So I'm going to be taking on Mount Nebel right here. For those of you that already saw, I did put out the video for the hard mode of Mount Nebel down below. This one is pretty similar to that one. The layout changes a little bit. The overall beta and strategy for the fight changes just a little bit, but a lot of the items and equipment that you're gonna use is gonna stay the same, which is pretty nice. So this is the team I'm gonna be bringing in. So for Cloud and Aerith, um, there's very little changes from the original hard mode Mount Nebel. For this fight, however, I did bring in Sephiroth. That is because two of the enemies are going to be weak to magic damage. So Tifa is more focused on physical DPS for me right now. And for those of you that have the Aonibi Sword, this is going to be greatly effective in this fight. And the reason being is that the two enemies that are weak to magic attacks are basically the most annoying ones to fight here. So we have the final boss, which is the Zetant Rattel. As you can see down here at the bottom, magic attacks are effective against this enemy, and it does give itself magic attack up. Uh, and then also the Mole Crawler here is going to be weak to magic attacks as well. Um, then we have the Vajradara Tai, which is going to be one of the bosses. The Vajradara Lin, I think. Actually, I think that the uh, this is the final boss of the of this dungeon. Yeah, that's right. We're going to fight the Mole Crawler and the Zetant Rattel, I believe, second and third. Fight the Vajradara Lin fourth, and then the Vajradara Tai fifth. So let me just go through the map right here. And I think that most players are going to want to follow this same strategy for taking on the bosses. So I'm going to go over the order really quick. So of course, we're going to have to take on the Poison Dragon first. After that, you're going to want to come up through here, get these chests come down to this boss right here which is the mole crawler after you take out the mole crawler you're going to go past these bosses come down here get this chest right here then come up and grab this chest right there then we are going to take on the zetant Rattel. all right this is because these bosses become incredibly tanky the longer it takes to fight them so you want to take them out of the way as soon as possible um, and then what works out with this strategy is after you take them out you're going to double back over here and take out the Vajradara Lin and by beating this boss there's a trance ability that's going to give you earth ability I think plus 15% and then um, I believe um, oh it's going to give you earth ability potency plus 30% but then magic defense down 60% but that works perfect because the final boss is only going to do physical attacks and it's weak to earth damage so I think that strategy overall is going to be the easiest to go through these guys. Um, just to look at the weaknesses here, I'm going to look at the resistances because that's what's going to determine what summons we take. So basically, this there are weaknesses to lightning, although there are a lot of, um, I mean, there are resistances to lightning, but there are a lot of weaknesses to lightning as well. But if we go through all the bosses right here, you're going to see that all of them are primarily weak to wind. So since there's no wind summon, you don't really need to worry about that. The regular dragon has no weakness and no resistances. All right, so let me go over the build really quick and we will get into the fight. All right, so going into Cloud right here, he is looking pretty damn strong. I think this might be the highest power I've ever actually gotten him. That being because I've been working the Maritime Sword and the Murasame for a long time. I recently got the Murasame OB10 and the Maritime Sword OB5, which I think is a big contributing factor to these stats. But I do think that even if you have the Murasame OB4, OB5, OB6, and the Maritime Sword even OB1, it's definitely going to work. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, I wish you guys the best of luck when it comes to that. I am running the Samurai Garb for the heightened lightning potency. I am also running Judgment Bolt for Ramu. Uh, for his Materia, I'm going to be running Cloud two different Sigil attacks. First is Ruin Rablo Circle, and then the second is going to be Ruin Rablo Triangle. Um, you really, for Cloud, if you're running Murasame, um, I put the triangle in the third slot for the sigil boost and that is basically because of the poison dragon down here. This one is going to have two sigils, a circle and a triangle. Um, and then also the Vajradar tie is going to have, oh it looks like that's just, oh no, it's set for some reason it doesn't show both. Oh gotcha. 
they each have individual sigils, sigils, circle and triangle. Uh, the nice thing about Cloud having the sigil breaker is that he can basically take care of triangle by himself. I do bring circle just so that he can help out the uh, other characters in the party. Um, but then everyone else in the team is going to be running a circle sigil. So three circle sigils on your team and then one triangle and hopefully on a weapon that has triangle sigil break. Um, his HP is sitting at 7, 7k HP, 3.2k attack, but I think that this can still be done with 2.5k attack and higher. His sub equipments are going to be the Seaside Collar for heightened lightning potency, the Crystal Gloves for heightened lightning potency, and then the Torn Wing right here, which is a great weapon to get level 90, I would say. Um, moving on to Aerith, she is sitting at 7k HP, 2.2k magic attack, and 1600 healing. I do recommend having over 6k HP for this fight. 6.5 would be even better if you can swing it. I am running her summer uh, costume right here along with Fairy Tail and the Mithril Rod, or the Mithril Rod, however you want to say it, um, is pretty helpful against several of the enemies because they do have some pretty big attacks like the final boss, um, the Vajradar Lin, and the Tai, and then also the Zetan Vertel can all, all do some pretty big heavy attacks, and the Sun Umbrella is not really going to be as effective against uh, several of these enemies. As for her Materia, I am running one of two different healing Asunas, the other one is on Sephiroth. In her second slot, I am running Quakera, and then her third slot, I am running a Circle Sigil Ruinra. And going into her sub-equips, we have the Beach Parasol, the Prism Rod, and the Sun Umbrella here. But really, you're just looking to have her magic attack above 2k, her healing above 1500, and her HP, you know, 6 to 7k if possible. Last but not least, here we have Sephiroth sitting at 7.5k HP. He's got a close to 2.4k magic attack. Um, I am running him the Dark Harbinger, honestly just for the HP, but you can also run his um, Ice costume for the magic attack. Uh, I'm running him the Owl Nibi in the first slot, and then the Edged Wings right here in the second slot, although he will rarely, I think, be using the Edged Wings throughout the fight. For his summon, I am running him Shiva with Diamond Dust. In his first Materia slot, we have our second Healing Asuna Poison. This is going to be for the Poison Dragon. You're going to want at least two Healing Asuna Poisons spread across your team. We do have Quakera, as he is a magic-based character right now. And last but not least, our Circle Sigil Ruinra. Going into his sub-equips, we have the Thousand Waves, we have the Arc Sword, and we have the Lefko Kipseli right here. All right, so this is the overall team going into this fight. Like I said, we are going to start with the dragon. All right, it looks like we have run out of dungeon keys. It did take me a few tries to beat this one and to get it kind of uh, figured out, but we are going to enter it right now, and hopefully this guide will help all of you guys get the S plus clear and all the rewards that come with it. Before I start this fight, I do want to give you guys a reminder that the Buster Sword dupe that's in the Crisis Metals shop is can expire. They changed the shop at the end of the month and that dupe will be gone. It will be replaced with another one at some point, but I do highly recommend getting through these, getting those Crisis Metals if you haven't done it, and getting that second Buster Sword dupe. Alright, that being said, let's get into the first fight against the Dragon. This fight, I think, uh, for most people, you should be able to just auto through it. Um, that is because it makes it pretty easy to auto through this. Um, I normally just switch to Cloud right here and just go straight into th uh, Thunder Strikes. And then the moment he, um, the moment he does his poison, since it's on auto, they're just going to quickly heal through it. Sephiroth and Aerith are going to heal off the poison. You can just focus on doing as much damage as possible. All right, and this is the first of the bosses, so he won't be quite as tanky as the other ones. We're getting his sigils right here. All right, so Cloud is going to take care of the triangles. Everyone else is going to take care of the circles, and we are going to burn him down right now as fast as possible. Hopefully we can kill him before the dragon dive comes up. We'll see. It's going to be quite close. Ooh, all right, so I went for the Judgment Bolt right here just because I didn't want to take that next hit. If you can kill him before he gets off that next attack, it will save you some points. 
just because you know we're graded on the point on the amount of damage we take throughout the fight among other factors so i did use that right there it's fine we'll we'll get it back in the next fight so we are going to get a battle score of 60k for the first battle which is pretty good i think for the s plus you're looking to get around 50k plus 55k even better um even though i did have one boss fight where i got like 36k and i still got the s plus so as long as you're 50,000 plus overall, you should be looking pretty good. But you should be shooting for 55 if you can. All right, so that's the first dragon out of the way. All right, so right here, there's two things. Uh, the fire resist, you're just going to completely ignore. You don't want that. So you're either going to take the healing potency. However, if the Zetant Retell is crushing you with its lightning attack, you can take the lightning re resist right here. Um, I have a pretty good amount of DPS, so I'm not too worried about it. So I'm going to go with the healing potency instead, as that will help for, for all the fights. All right, after that, you're going to run over here, get the chests. All right, so just take out this rock. We are going to fight our first random mob encounter. There's going to be two random mob encounters throughout this entire thing. Um, they're kind of annoying. They're called like Trips of Calicus or whatever. Here they are right here. And they do attacks based on your total amount of HP. So kind of like gravity, um, like gravity materia from Final Fantasy back in the day. So it does like a set percent of damage. So they can seem like they do a lot, but that's really if you're like at full health. All right. So we're just gonna take these guys down as fast as possible. They can hit you with a stun, but overall you're just trying to DPS them down. Use Aerith to heal if you need to uh, for the coming fights. They can be a little bit annoying, but we're going to take down the mobs after only... So that was after one uh, boss that we took down the first set of mobs. And then we're going to take down the second set of mobs after the second boss. So after that you won't have to worry about it, because I feel like if you were to fight those towards the end after killing like three or four of the bosses they could be really painful all right so after you take that down we are going to run back up around this hill right here and we are going to get to the second fight which is the mole crawler before you get here i recommend um you don't have to but you can use three supplements right here. I'm going to use them just to show you that even if you do use them, you can still get an S plus score with using all the items that I will use. All right, so we're going to go into this fight right here. And I'm actually going to auto this battle as well, just because this boss is pretty straightforward. Um, and the characters seem to, to make do pretty well. I'm going to switch over to Sephiroth, use his frenzied stance. And then we're just going to start doing as much damage as possible. Save your summons until he's at half health. Do not start to use your summons until he's at half health. Um, because that's when he starts to trigger his major damaging attacks. Alright? And then that way you can burn him down. Like the first half of the fight is not going to be too bad at all. So right when you get to this point, right when he starts to kind of freak out, is when you're going to want to just burn through everything right here if you don't manage to kill him even at this point it's all right um, but if you do save all your limit breaks and your summons until you get him to like 50 40 percent hp and then burn him down it's going to make this fight loads easier rather than coming in off the bat and then using those summons at the beginning which is basically just going to put him straight into his like dps uh part of his um form and then make it much harder to fight him. So definitely, definitely, definitely just use regular attacks for the first half of the fight. All right, so that is the second fight down. Not so bad, we are gonna get 61K for that. Like I said, shoot for 50 to 55. Okay, so for the second trance ability, let's see here. All right, so here we have earth potency 15%. Earth Potency plus 30%, but a Physical Defense of minus 40%, and Physical Defense plus 60%. I highly recommend taking the Physical Defense plus 60%. This is going to make the Vajradara fights much more doable. Alright, so when you finish that, come up here, get this chest. Then we are going to come down here, and we are going to get trigger the, the last set of adds, along with getting our last two chests. So you can just run down here over to the right. 
and we are going to get our third chest. Okay, perfect. We'll get the Wisdom Jelly. That's going to help with this Atant Rattel. Okay, and we're going to get our fourth chest right here. Beautiful, that's a cottage. Okay, now at this point, this is going to be our second set of adds. Same thing as the first time, it's just two of them. Just do as much damage as you can. And take them out as quickly as you can. If you want, you can switch over to Semi. And then um, go on to Aerith and make sure that by the time you finish this fight, you have a good amount of HP left. So I'll switch over to Aerith right here. And use some healing. And then just try to get everyone as topped off as you can in this fight for preparation going into the last one coming up, or the next one coming up. That's the attack that does a bunch of damage right there. Alright. Okay, so not bad at all. Alright, so now we don't have to worry about the adds for the rest of the fight. We only have to worry about the bosses. So we are going to come up here to the Zetant Rattel. Let's stop right in front of it. Let's look at our HP. We're minus 11, minus 11, minus 12, which is pretty good. Um, for those of you that are struggling with this fight, um, you can use the Wisdom Jelly right here, which will raise your magic defense by 50% during the next symbol enemy battle. Okay, so this will be very, very helpful overall for clearing things. So let's see right here. I will use, let's, uh, I'll use one on Cloud, and uh, let's try, oh, you know what, screw it. Let's just use three and see if using all these items is going to affect our score in the end. Okay, so let's jump into this fight. But that is going to significantly reduce the amount of damage that you're taking from his attacks post 50%. So just like the Mole Crawler, once you get him to 50%, that's when he really like turns on. And he's going to start using his Prismatic Ray all the time, which is super annoying. Alright. And now I'm going to keep it in semi. Semi-auto, just so that I can keep things going on. He is going to have that water weakness, which is why I put on the Maritime Sword. Okay. Alright, and we're just going to do as much damage as we can, as fast as we can do it. Alright, if you have good ATB with Aerith, you can toss on a Saving Grace right around half HP. Oh, whoops, shouldn't have used the Thunder Strike. But just basically try and do as much damage as you can. Make sure Sephiroth has his magic attack buff up. Buff up. Once his sigils start to pop like that, just break him as quickly as you can. Should be super easy. Alright, after that, just go full blown DPS. Take him down. He does have a resistance to Ramu and Thunder, so you don't want to use um, uh, basically Ramu. Alright, so I'm going to use Saving Grace, switch over right there. Alright, we're going to take his first Prismatic Ray, which as you can see took significantly less damage because of the little jelly right there. At this point, I'm going to use the two summons, I'm going to save the Judgment Bowl. Okay, here comes Shiva, and then after this Diamond Dust, I'm just going to try and burn him down as fast as I can. Alright, here we go. And the goal is to kill him before he gets off his next attack. Alright, so everyone is just doing full damage. Ooh, it's going to be close. Whew, we didn't get it, quite get it off, but it looks like it's going to be really close right here. Ooh, Sephiroth barely surviving, but it's okay. It's alright, just take him down right here, and we're going to get through it. I honestly think like the Zetant Rattel is going to be the hardest fight out of all of five. Uh, the Vajradars are really not that bad. They're way less tanky than these bosses right here. Alright, so you see we got a 41,000. I actually even got a 36,000 last time and still managed the S+. Alright, although last time I didn't use the magic defense jellies right there. I did lose Cloud on my last clear of this, but I still managed the S+. 
All right, so for this one right here, I'm gonna take the Earth Potency plus 15% because we already have the Healing Potency up 40. Okay, after you kill him, just run back down here. We're gonna take out the first of the Vajradaras. Uh, before we get to it, let's check everything. Okay, Sephiroth took a major hit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a Cottage to try and get everyone all the way back up to full. Hopefully that will prevent us from using the Mega Elixir right there. But if you're pretty weakened after that, you can use the Mega Elixir. I used the Mega Elixir on my first run of this. Okay, so we're gonna use the Cottage right there and we're gonna go into this next fight. All right, going on to the fourth of the fifth bosses. I'm gonna switch this down to slow speed and put it on manual. And at this point, we are just going to open up with damage. Okay, with Aerith, I'm going to use Saving Grace right here. And then we're going to switch over to the defense stance to block the first attack. Alright, after blocking that attack, switch back to attack mode. And we're going to try and take them down right here as quickly as we can. I'm going to get one heal off on everybody and then just focus killing the very first of the two i'm gonna pop judgment bolt right as they start to do their next attack to hopefully take down the first of the two all right and just spam your quake eras and your quake era blows okay at this point, you should be able to take down the first of the two. They are way less tanky than the Mole Crawler and the Zetan Rattel. All right, the first one's gonna go down, the second one gets angered. All right, here comes Will of the Land. I'm gonna cast Saving Grace right here. Let everyone else do their thing. And right at the end, we are going to switch over to the defense stance, block this. Okay, if you're at full health, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Once you take that, quickly switch back to the attack stance. You can go, at this point, I'm going to Healing Wind and hit him with all of the summits. And then we're just going to try and burn him down to the end. I, I'm not even sure if we really need to worry about the sigils at this point. Um, yeah, I don't think so. As you can see, the summons do a really good amount of damage to these guys. So, And it's the same with the final boss as well. Alright, so there you have it. This guy is going to go down, not even getting to his sigil form. I do want to stress that, I, although at the beginning of this video I didn't say why I equipped the Maritime Sword, but the um, Zetant Rattel is weak to water, and it is very helpful for taking it down. Alright, so that is the fourth out of fifth boss, and this is the last little key to taking down this entire stage. This is the one you want, Enhanced Elemental Attack in the middle, Earth Potency plus 30%. You are going to get a Magic Defense minus 40%, but the final boss is all physical, and so you don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to select this one in the middle right here, and we are basically good to go for the final boss. Um, we did use the Cottage, so we saved the points from the Mega Elixir, but I am going to use a Supplement on Sephiroth because he's at minus 32% right now, just to be careful. All right, so right here I'm gonna stop, and I'm going, oh, it looks like, oh yeah, I do have a supplement. All right, so I'm gonna use a supplement, then we're gonna come down here, and I'm gonna hit every single person with a Quake Cocktail. That's gonna make it so that we're doing major damage throughout the fight, and it's basically like a carbon copy of the last fight we did. I'm sure there's probably some differences, but to me it seems very, very similar. So you're just gonna start with the right one and take them down as quickly as you can. Use Saving Grace when you need to, um, and heal when you need to, etc. All right, so after that Quake Cocktail, you'll see that everyone is doing major, major, major damage right now. All right, I'm gonna, it looks like I'm not gonna get off that first Saving Grace, but we are just gonna switch to the defense stance. All right, that major physical defense boost we chose from one of the trances is gonna save us big time right there. Okay, after they after they didn't get off that attack, they both took a major physical defense down. Uh, so just do whatever you can to take them out right here. All right, 
and it looks like I'm gonna just try and go for the kill on the first one okay perfect now we can just focus on breaking the sigils for the second one all right perfect there we go and then you're just gonna DPS this guy down honestly they're it's really the, the Zetant Retell that is the like final boss of this fight, I would say. But with the Wisdom Jellies and the Earth Percentage up and the Maritime Sword, it shouldn't give you guys too much of a problem. And there you have it. That was the last boss of the very hard Mount Nebel stage. I used more items there than I've ever used before, with the exception of using a Cottage this time instead of a Mega Elixir. So we'll see if using all those items is gonna hold back our overall score of getting S plus. Let's see what we get right here. All right. Okay, so there's the clear. And S plus, there you go. So even with all those items that we used, you're gonna to be totally fine. So I highly recommend using the three supplements at the beginning three wisdom jellies later on the three quake cocktails later on i even used a fourth supplement and the cottage and if you need to use the mega elixir i'm pretty sure that you'll be fine as well with the mega elixir and the cottage it might get a little bit towing the line as i don't know exactly what score you need to get an s plus but i think as the with all crisis dungeons it just takes a little bit of trial and error you need to go in you need to figure out the pathing but whether you're a free-to-play player or a dolphin player i think that taking these trance abilities in this order and fighting the bosses in the same order that i did while taking out the random sets of mobs while not having the crisis level too high i think is an overall just great strategy for taking this on no matter what kind of weapons you have or where you're at in the game so i hope that this guide helps you guys get through this stage if you guys notice anything that i got wrong or that could potentially help other players clear the stage please share that in the comments below my channel is supposed to be a place that helps people clear different content in this game i really am enjoying this game i want to help other people enjoy this game so this is why i make these videos um, and i know that the rewards from clearing these stages are uh, very helpful for strengthening any account in Final Fantasy 7 Ever Crisis. Um, and yeah, if you look at my levels, I'm not even, I have two characters at 56 and Sephiroth at 55. So once you get level 60, this is going to be even easier. So if you're having trouble now, you know, get to level 57, hit that first uh, growth node point, level up your characters a bit, and you'll even have level 60 after that. So I don't think it will be too much uh, trouble for you guys out there. That being said, I wish you guys the best of luck with clearing the Mount Nebel very hard and getting the S plus ranking, getting all those crisis medals, and I hope you guys have some fun doing it. I hope this video helped you along the way. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for all your support. That being said, hope you all have a wonderful day, take care, and peace.